Today, we are introducing the vacuum muffle furnace from SH Scientific. We developed this because labs often face a trade-off between the high capacity but limited atmospheric gas control of a muffle furnace versus the more precise atmospheric control but limited sample size of a tube furnace. So, we created a way to combine a vacuum with inert gas management to achieve highly consistent saturation inside the larger chamber of a muffle furnace. Right now, we offer two variations of vacuum muffle furnaces. The first is the SHFU MGV series with a max temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius and sustained operation up to 1000 degrees Celsius. The second is the SHFU MHV series, which reaches 1500 degrees Celsius and can operate continuously at up to 1300 degrees Celsius. Today we are going to show SHFU 10 MGV, which has a 30 step programmable controller an on-off button for the heater, a vacuum and pressure display gauge, gas intake and outlet ports, and a vent valve. You'll open the furnace by gently pushing the handle and lifting the lock. Inside, there's a ceramic vacuum chamber surrounded by stainless steel box. Heating plates with heating elements on four sides. A temperature sensor. The gas out port on top. And the gas in port on the bottom. We're also excited to feature some options that are fairly unique in the industry. First is the mass flow controller. This is the most precise, responsive, and stable way to control the flow of inert gases, for instance, or whatever else your heat treatment requires. Next is a back pressure regulator, which maintains positive pressure inside the furnace's chamber. There's also a precision digital vacuum meter, which gives you real-time vacuum readings in torr, millibar, kilopascal, inches of mercury, pound force per square inch, and so forth. Additionally, there is an air and gas drying unit which removes moisture from gases as they flow in. And finally, we come to the vacuum pump which uses a stainless steel bellows hose. Now, we'll explain how to connect the vacuum pump, get gas flowing, and finally operate the furnace. First, connect your gas tank to the gas in port with a quarter inch hose. Then. Install the KF25 flange ball valve at the vacuum port of the furnace or at the intake port of the vacuum pump. Next, go ahead and connect the vacuum hose. By the way, when you order a pump, the valve and hose are included in the package. Now, turn on the main switch on the side of the furnace. At this point, turn on the vacuum pump and open the valve. Notice how the pressure in the chamber starts to fall. After 5 to 10 minutes, the pressure gauge will stay at the left bottom, or the digital vacuum meter will show 0.1 torr. This means the chamber is already a vacuum. However, you can reach a vacuum as high as 0.05 torr if you simply let the pump run longer. Anyway, once the vacuum is sufficient, just turn off the pump and close the valve. Next, it's time to set the mass flow controller and back pressure regulator. First, we recommend setting the gas regulator pressure on your gas tank under 0.5 bar or 0.05 megapascal. Any higher than that might damage the furnace chamber. The mass flow controller will detect and suppress line pressure fluctuations in real time so gas flow remains stable. There are 98 pre-configured gas options to choose from, but for this video, we'll use argon. On the screen, you can see the pressure, temperature, set point, volume, mass, and the menu button. Click next, menu, setup, and select. 
Use the up and down button to go to standard. Now you'll see air, argon, methane, CO, CO2, ethane, hydrogen, nitrogen, and so on. Since we're using argon for demonstrating purposes, I'll select it and then click main to return to the main screen. Then click set point and input your mass. I've set it to 500 milliliters. Now in the back pressure regulator, you can see the set pressure, set point, and menu. We're going to set our units by clicking menu, setup, sensor, engineering unit, and gauge pressure. We see various units like kilogram per square centimeter, pound force per square inch, pound force per square foot, tor, millimeter of mercury, etc. Use the up and down buttons to choose the desired unit. Then click set and the main button to return to the main screen. Here we recommend settings from 2 to 40 tor. I'll go with 30 and click set point to enter the value. This number is how much higher the chamber pressure is compared to atmospheric pressure. And since atmospheric pressure is 760 torr, and I've entered 30, the chamber pressure in this example will be 790 torr. By now, you've connected your gas and you've set up the MFC and BPR. So it's time to load your materials into the chamber. Remember to open all valves, which are gas in, gas out, and the vent. This enables the gas to quickly flood the chamber in the beginning. Once the chamber pressure is above atmospheric pressure, close the vent valve so the MFC can take over and accurately control the gas flow from here on out. The BPR will initially go up and down around the set point and will eventually settle right on the set point. Now, the chamber is completely saturated with the gas, so click the programmed pattern 1 or 2 button for 3 seconds and the controller will start working as per that pattern. Finally, it's time to hit the on switch, at which point the furnace will heat up and start to run your program. Thanks for watching, and on behalf of the whole SH team, we look forward to being of service.